People of the Purple Butterfly here, otherwise known as People of Seven on Twitter and YouTube, people are elsewhere or on the internet. My blog is located at purplebutterfly-people.blogspot.com. My soaps, Purple Butterfly Soaps, can be located at purplebutterfly-soaps.myshopify.com. And my Keurig is having a little bit of a fit. <laughs> so, I got creamer in here, and I'm finna make some coffee. But before I could do any of that, I keep my K cups in there. Before I could do any of that, I have to fix this carrot because it's not only running slow, but it's doing this gurgle, gurgle, and then this much out of every cup be missing. So, yeah, I'm going to show you how to fix that. Okay, everybody always says, oh, you have to descale it, stick a paper clip and all that in there. This is the K-series, so that doesn't work. Okay, it has a filter and a filter holder. This is a new filter. So I know that's not the issue. I'm going to dump out this water. It might need to be, you know, cleaned with a little vinegar. Or what they say, descaling, the descaling solution is almost 100% citric acid. Citric acid and vinegar are basically interactive the same way. But I'm going to show you something with this. Because the first thing I did when I discovered the issue is I looked at all the parts. You see that right here? On your regular Mr. Coffee machine... That's this part right here. See that spring and the spigot? When that gets all clogged up or whatever, that's the part you're cleaning out. So, basically, I, let's see if I get that where you can see it. See that? That's the spring. Which means, if there's anything clogged up in there, that's where it's going to be clogged up from. So, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, so I'm just going to completely rinse it out to see if that is, in fact, the issue. Blush it. Love this little sprayer thing. And I'm going to stick a knife in here so that way I can literally hold it down long enough to spray any debris that has gathered up all the way through. Give it a flush. Now I'm going to take this and push it like that, hold it down, that did not work, well I'll use my finger now, ah, I can see it, No flow, much flow. So now this should run fine. I'm going to go ahead and put some water in it. And then I'm going to put the filter thing back in there. This is a um, charcoal filter. It's a new charcoal filter, so I don't even have to worry about it at the moment. But say for instance it was a defective filter, I got nine more. So now, I'm going to put this back in there. 
I do intend to go ahead and give it a flush with, you know, vinegar and water and, you know, standard methods that work to clean out a, you know, gunked up coffee maker. But for right now, I want some coffee. And I'm not necessarily willing to wait till this thing wants to finish having a fit. So, yeah. Now, let's turn that on, see if it gurgles. That's the first thing that gives you a clue that your coffee maker isn't working. It'll either not make the gurgling sound when you turn it on, which is what's doing, I can hear it, or all of the lights will light up. And when all of the lights light up, first you have to hit the um, green light to make sure it's off, and then hit hold down the green light and then hit the different, um, you have a small, medium, large, hit all those buttons in a row, like one, two, three, one, two, three, turn it off, turn it back on and see if it starts. And that usually fixes it. And then when that doesn't work, it's um, the little part I just showed you. Where the spigot is. And that's working now. Basically, when you use a Mr. Coffee, this is your filter basket. You put your filter in here, you put your coffee in there. Um, when the water comes out the reservoir, it lifts up this little spring here and flows into the carafe. Well, because the carafe is made the way it's made, the spigot is on the bottom of the reservoir and it goes directly into the um, Keurig, you know, it flushes through the pot and all that. And when that doesn't work, then you open up the part where the needle is. And you could use a paper clip or something. Not your fingers because it has two needles in there. One needle punctures the pod and you know to bring the water in and the other needle punctures the pod so that way the water flows out with heat and the water to produce coffee. Oh that smells lovely and it's actually brewing faster now too. I can show it to you. Let's bring you on over. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's working. It went through here. And then it flows through here. See? That's where it comes out. And, yeah. So, basic mechanics. If you know how something works, then, I mean, I know someone personally my carrot costs a lot more. This thing costs 80 bucks. But she spent like 50 bucks when the first issue happened. She threw it out and bought another one. Don't do that. That's what we used to do with the Mr. Coffees. We used to buy Mr. Coffee for 20 bucks. <laughs> Any problem that happened, if I couldn't fix it, I had no problem throwing it out, spending 20 bucks on another one. Because Mr. Coffee will last about two or three years for that 20 bucks. That carrot, 80 bucks. You hear that? It's doing the gurgle. That means it's done. It's at the end of the cycle. I'm going to show you this. But anyway, I've had this carrot for three years. I ain't trying to throw it away just because it had an issue. Okay, now look at there. See how high up that is? That means it's right there. The problem was it kept stopping its brew cycle right there for the, I mean, look at this. This is uh, 6, 8, 10, 12. So for the 12 ounce cup of coffee, it was stopping right at the, you know, 6 ounce mark which is not good. 
But now I got a full cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice, strong cup of coffee. And I didn't have to throw out anything or stick anything up in there. I mean, if that didn't work, I already, I mean, hello. I had a 12 pack of filters. I've already used the filters. When I was having the problem the first time, I went, maybe it's the filter. So the first thing I did, of course, was change the filter. Then I checked where the um, pot, well, let me just go ahead and show you the, because the brew cycle's done yet. But you do not want to use your fingers to fix the, hold on, let's, that's the pot, right? That I just used. Right there is a needle. And up there is a needle. You see that? That's the needle that hits this part. This is the needle that hits this part. You do not want your fingers in there. Like right here it says sharp needles, hot water, warning, caution, sharp needles. It says that because it has two needles and that sucker does get hot. I mean, hot enough to make hot coffee. That's not something you want to play with if you don't know what you're doing. So, I checked out YouTube on how to fix a slow-moving Keurig. The first thing they said was, stick a toothpick up in there. Stick a paper clip up in there. And basically, they was telling you to scrape off the um, pods where the needles are because there's coffee grounds that get caught up in there. The way mines work, that never happens. And mine has a filtration system. I changed the filter. I did all that. Now, later today, I do intend, like, when I'm leaving the house, so that way I won't be real concerned about a cup of coffee right now. I'll just go ahead and throw a cup of water, a cup of vinegar in there with the water and let it do the soaking thing and all that, and then go ahead and... Um, send it through a cycle or two and take out the um, filter because <laughs> that happened the last time. I ran it through a cycle. I forgot to remove the charcoal filter and three coffee cups and I'm going, why does it taste? Uh, what is it? Oh, the vinegar was soaked through the coffee filter and it made every cup of coffee Tastes a little off. So three cups in, I'm going, really, what is, oh, it's the vinegar. So, of course, I had to change out the filter again. So I know to take the, I mean, the way that thing is made, the uh, filter holder, I just literally take that, put it in the sink, go ahead and put the vinegar through it because it does work without that filter contraption. And go ahead and run it through a couple of cycles or just let it run until it's completely empty with the vinegar to give it a real good flush. Then run it through with some plain water, put the filter basket back in it, and it'll be fine. But for right now, I just needed some coffee. And I didn't need to drive all the way over to Starbucks because the coffee maker's on the fritz. Or to UDF, which is, you know, when I run out of coffee, there's three places I go. I could either go to the White Castles, that's a block up the street, because they have Wallingford coffee, which is like literally the best. Or I could go next door to the UDF. When I go to the UDF, it's so that way I get points, so that way the gas is cheaper, because with the points, they take off three cents per gallon per item that you buy that qualifies. The last time I got gas, I paid a dollar and nine cents just because I had like 45 points. So that's worth it. That's also where I get the potato chips and snacky doodles, bread, stuff like that. So when I go to UDF, it's not just to get coffee, it's to get other stuff. When I'm not going to UDF and when I'm not going to White Castles, I'll go ahead and go to Starbucks since I'm out and about anyway and I want a good cup of coffee. 
Oh, and Starbucks has a new size. It's called Trinya. It's 30 ounces. So basically, it's about four ounces, no, six ounces bigger than Venti. Venti is, um, no, actually, that's wrong. Venti is 24 ounces. So, yeah, Trina is 30 ounces, so that's six ounces more. It's like um, if you took a Venti cup and a Grande cup and mixed the two together, you get that new size. Um, I do actually have to go out later today, and I'll probably go ahead and get one. I always get the iced coffee splash of almond milk, 375, and you get literally this much more coffee. And I'll make sure I save the container so you can see how big this thing is. I've been using it for ice water and stuff when I'm not using it for the coffee. It is amazingly large. Two of these and a half will fit in the one Trenta. Or Trenta, or however they're spelling that. I didn't even know they had a new size until I went to order some coffee on the app. I usually order on the app while I'm on my way towards that way, while I'm already out, you know, running errands. And then I order it, pay for it, and then show up and click which slot I'm in, you know, because they have um, curbside service, you know, four bays, one, two, three, four, right? I mean, it's like one and two, the handicapped spots, two of those, and then three and four. And basically, instead of parking in the handicapped spot and waddling on in or getting my order, whatever, I just do everything through the app. You know, tell them which bay I'm going to be at. They come to me. I take my stuff home. And I don't have to get out the car. I don't have to deal with people. I don't have to deal with, you know, anti masks going, <coughs> I don't need a mask. <coughs> yes, you do. <laughs> no arguments there. Anyway, this has been People of Seven on Twitter and YouTube, People of Elsewhere or the Internet. My blog is located at Purple Butterfly dash people dot black spot dot com. My soaps, Purple Butterfly Soaps, can be located at Purple Butterfly dash soaps dot my Shopify dot com. It's Christmas season. I got much soap. I got other items. Go check it out. See what you like. Get yourself something nice.